Dancing Waters. How long have you worked with them? Oh, I've I've had them for a long time. I would say 12 years or so. Oh, yeah. I don't use them all okay. over, though. You know? I guess we are rolling. Okay. With Liberace, here in the Twin Cities, the man who has developed subtlety into a fine art, right? Well, thank you, Bill. I've never heard it put that way before. <laughs> you know, it, it occurred to me that if you have a firm foundation of talent, then you can kind of laugh at any of the criticism that might come along. It, it occurred to me as I was watching you tonight that somewhere down the line, somebody may have said, he's very talented, but maybe he's a little flamboyant. And you <laughs> said, flamboyant, let me show you flamboyant. <laughs> well, the flamboyancy uh, uh, is something that just sort of grew as time went on. I didn't start out that way. I used to be quite conservative in my dress. On television, I wore a black full dress suit. And then when I started going around playing uh, places like the Hollywood Bowl and Madison Square Garden and the Cow Palace in San Francisco, someone suggested that I wear something besides black so I would uh, be seen from a great distance. Mm -hmm. And some of these places, uh, I mean, the people in the back rows were a good city block away from me. So I wore a white suit instead of a black suit. That's how it all started. And then from the white suit, I went to Gold Lame and then before I knew it, it was becoming a part of my contract. Uh, they expected me to uh, wear costumes. And, um, and then, of course, as the years went on, other performers started copying me. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, very flattering, but at the same time, it forced me to be a couple of steps ahead of everybody else. So the only way I could be ahead of them was to uh, uh, be outrageous, you know. <laughs> And uh, my costumes now have become a very expensive joke. However, you've never let that joke get away, uh, get in the way of the, of the talent, of the music. Have you? Well, it has. Uh, I think of it like window dressing. Uh, it's like giving someone a present and not wrapping it. Something mm -hmm. is lacking, even if the present is a fabulous present. It means so much more if it's wrapped in pretty paper with beautiful bows and, and uh, I like to think of myself as a fully wrapped package <laughs> and then uh, I open up uh, uh, and perform that's what's inside the package yeah. and uh, it, it has worked very well for me I mean if if I just came out and uh, wore a costume I don't think the audience would be uh, would sit still for that. No, I, I was saying that all of that, those rings and everything must be heavy, and you said? Well, I used to think they were heavy when I didn't have them. <laughs> and uh, now everybody says, how do you play with all those rings on? And I say, very well. <laughs> you invest in your show, don't you? I mean, you got a lot of plumbing upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, that element of it. And You're then, speaking of the dancing waters. Right. Well, uh, I feel that uh, there again, uh, you have to invest money in, in, into a product in order to make it saleable. And I am a product. I'm an entertainment product. And uh, uh, even Rolls-Royce advertises and Cadillac. And, and uh, uh, people are always waiting for the new model to come out. And in my case, it's what's he going to wear next, you know? <laughs> right. And so I try to... Um, uh, have some surprises every time I uh, I appear, and I play in a lot of places frequently, uh, time and time again. Uh, in Las Vegas, for instance, I've been playing there since 1944, and I've had to come up with a lot of surprises to uh, stay there that many years. Does any criticism bother you? I mean, you you are clearly unabashedly sentimental. You don't care about criticism for flamboyance, or uh, you have. You have almost eliminated any concern, at least our impression is, any concern about criticism. Well, it did bother me in the beginning, but then when I realized that uh, it was working in my behalf and it was bringing me to the attention of people who really weren't aware of my presence until they read something derogatory about me, then uh, I discovered that uh, all this criticism was making me cry all the way to the bank. Uh -huh. And uh, then later on, the bank that I cried all the way to, I bought. <laughs> so I can truly laugh 
at, at, at all of it. I always welcome anything that's constructive. I think uh, you're never too many years in this business or too old to learn. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly learning, and I think that's my fascination for music and show business, is that you never really feel you've done it all. And the longer I stay in the business, the more new things are cropping up. Uh, the Radio City Music Hall will be my 40th anniversary mm -hmm. celebration. That's the first time in my life that I will be playing at the Music Hall. And uh, there's a lot of things like the London Philharmonic Orchestra, that was a first. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are happening to me, uh, you know, after all of these years. And it kind of reminds me of some of the other people much older than myself who are enjoying the peak moments of their career, people like George Burns, mm -hmm. who won an Academy Award uh, when he was 86 or something, and Catherine Hepburn and people like that, and Henry Fonda, much older than myself, but really uh, at the peak of their perfection. Uh, people like Arthur Rubinstein and Horowitz, mm -hmm. the great concert pianist, have never uh, played better than they did when they reached the age of the late 80s and early 90s. So it gives me the encouragement because I'm just a young fella compared <laughs> to them. There's so many people here who want to take a look at your rings with a jeweler's glass or something. <laughs> <laughs> Do want to meet you. But on stage, you're very sentimental, as we talked about. Are you sentimental off stage? Well, yes. I think uh, in order to be a creative artist, you have to be sensitive and uh, uh, I don't think I could uh, uh, portray what I do or uh, create what I do musically if I wasn't sensitive and of course it isn't just in my own work but I'm sensitive to other people's work mm -hmm. and I love to go to a, an entertainment be it a play or a movie or a television uh, show where I feel I've run the gamut of emotions. I like to laugh, cry, be outraged, be shocked. I think when you have an evening like that, you feel fulfilled. And some of our entertainment these days only depresses you, you know what I mean? You yeah. go away thinking, gosh, I wish I hadn't seen that. I have enough problems of my own without yeah. taking on someone else's. Well, a lot of people went away very happy to Well, that's, that's what it's all about. Thank you very much Thank for spending you, these Bill. moments with us. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Just a couple pictures you have, sir. I just want to get a few pictures out, sir. Uh, Jill? Oh, yeah, yes, you got to get this here. The piano. Jill Clayton, who came with me tonight, was going to have you sign something for her mother, but after seeing you for the first time, you see why it's a person. All right, okay. Here, I have now we got one, okay. Oh well, I'm, I usually have it on when I'm working, and if they want that, they have to take me with it. Okay, so before long, we before long we have